Welcome back to the farm, everyone. It is November 2nd. There is a lot to digest right now. We've got a neighbor working some corn stalks. Same neighbor's having some custom anhydrous put on. Another neighbor's chiseling to the east. Another neighbor's still picking some corn to the east. There's a lot of diversity in what stage everyone is right now in the fall season. And Lucky, well, he's just trying to figure out how to itch his back effectively. Oh, oh he's getting a stick. He was claiming the stick as his. Thank you. It is Saturday here. It would be nice to take the day off, watch some college football. However, we've still got a few things to wrap up. Katie's working on the last of our corn stalks. I'm gonna take over in a little bit. Dad took one of our semis to go help my grandpa, which is his father-in-law, just to clarify, because some people don't farm with their own father just because of the way things work out. He's helping haul grain because they've got a little bit left to finish and an extra truck with the elevators being full really helps keep harvest going quickly. We've got the big old GMC Sierra fuel trailer loaded up here, 25 gallons of diesel fuel. Don't know if we're gonna need it to finish the field Katie's on right now when we take over. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in, that way we don't have to worry about it. Katie and I just switched out. Looks like we're good on fuel, so we're not gonna add any. Only 20 acres left to go. This is my first time running the 2660 VT since setting it when we first got it out last week to run. Katie quite literally ran the wheels off here. One of the stabilizers fell off yesterday, and we honestly didn't think it really needed it, so we're just finishing up without it. I have to give Katie credit because she's put in a serious amount of time in this over the last week with the help of Jeff to get a lot of our corn stalks worked. And this farm in particular, which in total is like 310 acres, she got up here last night at maybe 5 to 6 o'clock, ran to almost 11, started again at 8 this morning, and by 1 o'clock this is going to be done. I've had the luxury of just showing up for the tail end of it. I've got maybe two rounds and then I'm leaving. She did all the hard work here. This is just like getting an A on a group project that you contributed nothing to. Worked the last 10 acres, but I get to bring her home like I did it all. Good news, we made it back home to the fuel barrel because the tractor's getting a little low. Bad news is that I noticed in this front left duel there was a small steel rod sticking out, making its way round and round as we came home. So I don't know where we acquired that or if it's gonna be a big issue. Yep, I can tell by the sound that that is an issue. That's not good. I interrupted the boss's peaceful trucking afternoon with my mom's family. He said that I probably should not run this like this. Obviously, you're not gonna pull it out because it was leaking enough air that if you pull it out, you're going to just lose all your air immediately. I thought there was a possibility you could just run it and see what happens because it doesn't sound like it's leaking in this position. I guess if it falls out, you're also going to lose all your air. So there's not really any winning here. It's Saturday, there's no tire guys that are in the area or open. So we probably can't finish it unless I swap tractors. I interrupted dad's peaceful afternoon of trucking some corn with the bad news. He suggested that we just go ahead and switch tractors out since it's Saturday and we probably shouldn't run with a steel rod in the tire. I can't really argue with that decision. So with those orders, we're gonna get in position to switch. Looks like it oscillates on its way around. Now it's pointing to the west of the tractor. Ah, oh, gotta love steel. It's actually kind of hard to speculate how long that was on the tractor. We could have just picked it up on the way home or that could have been riding for the last 500 acres and we just never noticed it. Up. Well, there's no way for sure to know that it was me. Well, you're the last one in it. It doesn't mean it wasn't in there that whole time. Where is it? This is in the front left tire. Will you uh, pull this up? Uh, 
I need to take a brief break from the action to tell you all about the sponsor of today's video, Jackery. As a brand, Jackery is the leader in portable clean energy solutions since 2012. They're a global leading brand selling over 3 million units so far. They create products that are great for a variety of purposes from off the grid lifestyle to battery backups in case of storms and power issues. If you're looking for sustainable and reliable home energy, the Jackery 3000 Pro is probably one of the best options on the market for any condition. From hot to cold, you can count on this to provide you the energy you need to get through the day. Here's a few quick specs. It has 3,024 watt hours of capacity and a 3,000 watt output. It can support 99% of home appliances and is designed for long-term power during disasters, functioning well even in cold down to negative four degrees. The Solar Saga panels are capable of outputting 200 watts in the correct sun conditions that would be great for remote powering of different things right now i don't have it in the best use i'm powering a few things in the chicken coop they're so fun even the cats and chickens like them this was just my way of kind of testing out the basic capabilities the charging speed of this system i've had it for a short while now and i've actually been really impressed the possibilities with this setup are almost limitless and if you're interested in off the grid living whether you're camping in a remote location with no utility hookups this would be a great system if you're traveling hunting and you need a portable lightweight yet high capacity battery solution this would work great these panels fold up very nicely i'm not going to do it because i've got them set where i want them for now the battery does have a handle on here if the cat lets me move it to actually move it around almost like a suitcase this does store enough power to provide temporary backup in case of emergency one idea i brainstormed so far that I'd really love to implement is actually to incorporate this into our well house over there. If we have a power outage for some reason, they seem to happen a lot around here, it'd be nice to actually have a battery backup system or get completely off the grid and use a battery-based and renewable energy source like solar to provide us cheaper energy that we can rely on even in less than ideal times. I also thought about incorporating this into a remote repeater system set up for our radios. Getting a GMRS radio up on a spot without power like one of those tall harvesters. And of course, just running the chicken coop, which is not really the most effective way to do it, but it is a use of the product. You could have this set up and then if you have a power outage at home, drag the battery inside Go ahead and run your house for a little bit, run your essentials. You give the chickens electricity and the next thing you know, they're attacking small children. <laughs> no, we were... We were... <laughs> <laughs> you got some followers. The user interface is really simple. You've got this digital display. I don't have it entirely figured out. I need to do a little more learning on my end. There's also an app that lets you visualize some of these different features. I think you guys should check it out if you're in the market for a renewable powered battery backup solution. What for you? Chicken? There's a lot of deer heads that you the chicken. I've been having a blast playing around with this and I haven't even had enough time with how busy we are to really test it out. Head over to Jackery's website, check out their different solar generator options. You may just find something that you've been looking for. Thanks to Jackery for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the action. pit stop. Other tractor's on, we're headed to work some more. Oh yes, nothing quite as financially sound as keeping a $200,000 tractor on the balance sheet and insured just in case you get a piece of scrap metal in your tire. Dad and I have fundamental differences in how we approach the management of assets. With that being said, I'm a young gun. I don't have very many assets. This tractor, this disc, the other tractors are not mine. The only thing that's mine is the sprayer. So we're looking at things from two different lenses. He's got the old school approach where he'd rather have an extra one in case one breaks. And I'm a lean and mean type of guy where I think we should be eliminating tractors and insurance payments and opportunity costs lost, putting that money in the ground and tile 
and moving on down the road. Worked out for us here though, because we needed a tractor to finish this weekend and we've got one. Looks like we've got some nice and dusty tillage therapy this evening. Beautiful evening for it. Fall's coming to an end quickly. We're southwest of the main farm, and this is actually a new set of fields to us, which is always exciting. Over the years, I've really enjoyed sharing the nitty-gritty details, uh, the underworkings of our farm. When it comes to matters involving people other than us, I do have to kind of find a line between being transparent and also private because there's other parties involved, and I really don't want to share too much details. Katie and I were approached last minute, just a week ago, thanks to our beloved grandmother, with an opportunity to rent a farm for 2025. This individual farm is a part of a larger set of opportunities in the area. Unfortunately, a prominent local farmer passed away this spring, and because of it, his family's decided to exit from farming. Not gonna name any names or share much more than that. It's an unfortunate deal when someone passes. However, it does open up opportunities for other farmers. This individual farm and the landowners were looking for someone capable of covering the ground quickly while also doing a great job farming, producing high yielding crops, and most importantly, just someone that they could trust to take care of their land because they have extremely strong ties to the land. It's family farmland, yet they moved away for other opportunities years ago, so they're not here every day. A lot of landowners are looking for someone they can trust, and not just because of our own reputation, but more so because of our beloved grandmother's recommendation they took a chance to work with us in my opinion and you can discard this if you think it's worthless i don't have a single field in our sheet of fields that i don't want to be managed to the highest level possible whether that be the crops that are produced on the acres or how the field is groomed now some fields are a little more challenging to groom whether it be distance or you know maybe natural elements of the farm, ditches, you name it. Anyways, I can try to ramble and talk us up as much as I want. We are far from perfect. We learn things that we need to do differently and things we're doing right every single season like everyone else. I think we do a pretty good job, although there's always room for improvement. With that being said, my sister and I got to meet with the family, talk a little bit about the heritage of this farm, talk about their upbringing on the farm, and I really get a lot of joy out of hearing about people's time on the farm, seeing some of the old equipment laying around and honestly just making that connection with the previous generations and feeling the emotional attachment to the farm because that's lost on a lot of people. I for one find a lot of value in people who care a lot about their farm even if they're not on it anymore. From a management perspective, priority number one is to pull new soil samples so we have a baseline to compare to over the years. We can look at pH, we can look at phosphorus and potassium levels and build upon those to push fertility higher, get the pH in the right range, and grow really big crops. There's three separate fields here. Two were soybeans last year, one is corn. I personally believe that you get a lot of efficiency out of having everything in one area in the same crop. We're probably gonna move all three fields to corn. The reason for that being, they're all right next door. They should behave similarly based on my estimation. And I think we can just do a better job getting here in a timely manner and having our post application done correctly at the right time frame if all three fields are the same. If we gotta move around and do different things because we've got fields split up, I think it slows us down and makes us less effective. Just because we're over here, we are tilling the stubble as well. I'm thinking maybe that will eliminate the need for chemical this fall from winter annuals, although I don't really know for sure, time will tell. We're gonna work the corn stalks twice because we need to get those corn stalks really chopped up. The previous corn crops residue can really cause a yield drag on a secondary planting of corn. That's the main goal here. We're just kind of working on a little secondary project in the soybean field. Whew. My shift's over. Katie's gonna hop back in and finish the last 40 acres. We gotta rework the corn stalks, like I mentioned. And then we'll be on to other things. Not tonight, obviously. That'll be the last project of tonight. It's finally happened. We've had over seven tenths of an inch of rain so far this morning, just what the doctor ordered. That means no tillage, which isn't the worst thing in the world. The ground needed resaturated. We're inside, hunker down, staying dry, staying warm. It's kind of a chilly rain. I'd like to do nothing, yet I'm going to do something just so I don't go crazy. We're gonna to put together this Sunfire heater. According to the literature, this thing puts out enough BTUs to heat 2,800 square foot, which will do this 40 by 60 shed here at Dad's almost effortlessly. 
There's some assembly required out of the box, which is no big deal. Gives me something to do on a nice rainy day like today. This thing looks like a beast though. Help if you use the wrench the right direction. This unit puts out 120,000 BTUs of heat. Pretty warm. I might try putting in the chicken coop to keep them warm this winter. That was a joke for the record. What do you guys call a heater like this? I've always referred to it as a salamander. I don't know if that was a brand once upon a time or a torpedo heater. This obviously isn't a torpedo. It's more like a jet engine. It should fire, I just forgot to prime it. Ooh, I've had this thing running for 60 seconds and it's already about time to take the sweatshirt off. I'm just doing a little demo run. It's not that cold outside, we don't need it today, but this will be super useful in the future. We are back in action today with our little helper. After about inch and a half, maybe two inches of rain over the last few days, it was welcomed because it's gonna help hydrate our ground, incorporate some fertilizer, soften it up a little bit so we can think about putting on anhydrous. They got the tire fixed yesterday. So we swapped out the 9460Rs, put the other one back on. Now we're doing a little bit of winter time shuffling. So trying to reposition things correctly in the shed. That way we can unhook things. We're not done with the vertical till but we're done with a few other things like the inline ripper. We've got to move the green cart so we can put something here in this corner. I did a move. Whoa, look. I did, I did the camera. What's it doing? Okay, fire it up. Fire it up, yep. Lenny, it looks like we're getting a new power pole at the farm. You didn't break that, did you? No, Daddy. The wind must have taken the top off of it or something. They've had six or seven trucks out here working on it. There's two different power services that cross here and the power going in is three phase. Hey, Dad, so it's got to be complicated. So I got them apart because they're going to make them more better. Yeah, look, they're raising the top off. they got all these cherry pickers out here. Lenny fell in the mud puddle and now he's got a runny nose. The good news is that he's got some gushers to snack on after a morning of hard work. What shape are gushers? Uh, uh diamonds. Diamonds? Or are they yeah. hexagons? They're diamonds. Diamonds? Uh -huh. Mommy likes diamonds. What would it? I want Riddy at Mimi's house when, when Mimi house was mine now. Oh, Mimi's house is yours now? Yeah. You claimed it? Cause I, I got gushers. You got gushers? At home at my home. That was nice of her to let us have those. Alright, time to go back home. Can I get those ones? Sure. And that was one. Say it, bye to everyone. Bye to everyone. Bye. This will probably be an interesting and frustrating experience trying to put this 
45 foot draper on the all wheel steer cart in this small little door. Get over about a foot. I cannot see you. I know. I cannot you. kill you. I'm going to have to get out here. Well, we got to be in here too to stop you from. Well, you both told me to be in there. Yeah, you do. And you, so you got to see up top where it's going to, when it comes up, it's going to so hit. What do I need? Just come back? No, you need to get over a foot. How far? Just to get by here. Well, I'm going to go by there. Not where you're cutting that when you come back. The Hagee has to feel pretty unimportant as it's been sitting outside for three months while we're already getting the harvest stuff put away. Jeff Power washed off the grain cart, so we're gonna pull it in and unhook it, and then the 8R370 will get washed off. Just trying to cross things off the list. The 9460 that did a little stint on the vertical tail may not even start. Batteries are a little weak. It is a 2014 and I believe it has the factory batteries still in it. They're probably due to replace, just do it next spring maybe. It has to be the batteries because this tractor spent probably 16 hours on the vertical till while it was hooked up. The alternator was bad, it wouldn't start at all. It just doesn't seem to have the cold cranking amps it needs to anymore. The grain cart goes where this tractor was parked.
Jeff volunteered for the dirty job today. He's power washing the eight row corn head. And then I'm gonna pull this 8R370 in there to clean it off. This thing ought to clean up pretty easy. It's just dust and light dirt on it. No mud this year, hardly rain during harvest. It's not great for harvesting moistures because you pick and cut a lot of dry crops, yet your equipment stays pretty clean. Wash bay's getting a little muddy. folks I must apologize I've been kind of scatterbrained all over the place harvest winds down and then you kind of lose some of the structure you need to make things flow smoothly we've been accomplishing a lot of things on our list it's just not all been filmed or organized and it makes it a little challenging for me to keep it all chronological we are getting things done we've got a whole new slate of work coming up as winter comes along maybe some tile projects definitely a few things that we're going to do on our farm to improve for 2025 with that being said i'm pulling the plug on this video appreciate you all tuning in hope to see you in the next one peace